Welcome everyone to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz and I'm coming to you from Ireland and today I'm joined by wonderful Paula Smith who is joining us from Spain. But Paula, I believe you're originally from Netherlands, right? Mm, And it's my great joy to welcome Paula and to introduce her background story, her unique experiences with Galactic Astrology as she is our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioners so she's dedicating a lot of her time and effort and energy to assist others in delineating their galactic astrology chart which is focusing on the fixed stars alignments and deeper space objects like the galactic center and beyond and uh, tuning into soul records and uh, bringing the most appropriate information to support Uh, people on their journey through life and towards greater expansion and evolution of consciousness. So really well done, Paula. Congratulations for reaching this milestone. Thank you so much. So it's been um, (laughs) here. Thank you. I'm so glad you're excited too. I was just looking at your chart and today's transiting charts. And it's so interesting because we will be talking later on about some of your alignments. But as usual, uh, beautiful life synchronicity has it. Whenever there are important transits of certain fixed stars, those fixed stars are very prominent in the person that we interviews charge so it's so so good to see that so we'll mention that later on as well perfect timing and i believe we rescheduled right a few days uh quite a few so it's just meant to be you know we go with the flow um i just love it so paula i'm really curious about your journey spiritual uh, kind of consciousness expansion where you started connecting to the unseen world and the other side and kind of working with your intuition working in the energies you have other certifications as well that we will mention as you will share your story so uh, where would you like to start (laughs) that's a good question yeah (laughs) let's start when I was a little girl I think I've always been very sensitive and very intuitive when I was little so I think I've always like felt a lot of energies, emotions from other people, but I was definitely not conscious. So this is a, yeah something I discovered later on. Yeah, I made a, a actually a really big change, move from from the Netherlands to Spain, and that was uh, six and a half years ago. And that for me, and I think like in my journey also, yeah, it's a very big a big point. And I think and I feel that I literally needed to physically like move away from the Netherlands in order to yeah find myself in Spain here. And how my spiritual journey began was actually how I met my uh, spiritual teacher. And that was uh, for me also a very special story because I met her um, at my work. She was uh, giving a massage. Actually, during the, the therapy, during the massage, she said something to me. Um, which resonated so much that after the treatment, I walked back and I said, I just know and I just feel that you can help me, that we can work together. Uh, and that was such a special moment. I didn't know her background and she happened to be like, um, um, yeah, working with the Akashic Records, uh, being a Reiki master, giving a lot of healings, readings. So from that point, uh, I actually started uh, yeah, my inner work and uh, did a lot of journeys together with her, some shamanic journeys, visiting Egypt, uh, working with uh, Sekhmet, Isis, um, which yeah, I'm sure you're all for familiar with. Um, and also she attuned me to Reiki. Um, so yeah, that's definitely, for me, that was definitely a big start of my spiritual journey. But I do think during the, the COVID uh, period, uh, while I was yeah, in my apartment, not being able to yeah, move, move out, go outside, I think uh, since then it really shifted, um, it's it, it, yeah, speeded up because I couldn't really do a lot of different things than turning inwards and I actually see it as a very um, positive experience. So I, I took everything like, okay, this, this is a lesson, what can I learn from it? So I really tried to deep dive within. I was trying to get my hands out of every spiritual book I could possibly find. So I was doing a lot of reading. Amazing. Yeah. What a blessing to have such an encounter, right? Where you just awakened. And I bet if we looked at the transits, <laughs> as, you know, uh, planetary transits and certainly fixed stars transit at the time when you had a massage, 
I, I bet there would be some uh, explanation to why you were so activated at that time. So I feel that story actually aligns really beautifully with the alignment that I briefly mentioned earlier on. So at the time of the recording of this podcast, 15th of June, 2023, at this hour, the star, fixed star, a crooks in crooks constellation, that is like a cross, and it's the smallest constellation on the sky, is rising on the horizon. And your uh, natal chart, so when you were born, you have, uh, first of all, your south, north, node trine sextile, uh, this constellation. So it's, um, it's a very positive influence for your kind of soul's journey across lifetimes. Your Venus in Scorpio in fifth house is conjunct a crux uh, within 1.39 uh, degree and your Pluto in Scorpio also fifth house is conjunct a crux too so it's a very powerful transformational alignment for you with Venus and Pluto here and uh, south north node and so from my experience with this uh, star people who have it aligned in a in a you know a beneficial way they feel very interested passionate about occult matters so certainly you know like the mystery schools that you've mentioned teachings of the ancients of the masters and being passionate about expanding your consciousness so that you can serve others in a powerful transformational way just like what you've experienced i presume you're uh, guided towards that ideal where you too will awaken that uh, ability within your being, I would say, reawakened or re-remember uh, from previous lifetimes um, so that you can support our collective ascension and evolution towards higher consciousness. Such a powerful um, star alignment. So how was it for you? So during COVID last year, that's, I believe, when you came across Galactic Astrology. I think that's that was uh, the enrollment time for the course in 2022. Yeah. How was that yes. for you? <laughs> so I was uh, actually, um, I found you through a friend who did a reading with you. Uh, and before I was following Elena Danan as well. So I also followed, of course, the, the interview. Um, and before I, I already was interested in um, yeah the galactic uh, scene. <laughs> so uh, it was not my first introduction, but it felt so aligned by actually um, having something physical uh, that you can touch as like a chart with the alignments. Yeah, use it as as a as a beautiful soul map, but indeed having something physical to relate to. So that for me was really yeah really special. Soul map is such a, a perfect description of what astrological chart is. It is incredible. I'm just forever excited about learning about people's individuals journeys, their stories, and then seeing them reflected in their astrology. So you have quite a few really um, high vibrational alignments in your chart, including your Jupiter in Taurus and 12th house conjunct Pleiades very tightly within less than one degree. And then also your sun is conjunct Antares, one of the royal stars in Sagittarius 6th house within 0 0.07. It's just less than a minute. So it's very, very strong connection. So Antares, it's all about, um, I, I see it with people who have, uh, natural ability to be very strategic or focused on long-term vision and then being able to dedicate their time and energy to whether study or, uh, you know, uh, gathering, developing skills that help them fulfill the long-term mission. Uh, they're really incredible at that. So just hearing a little bit from your story, um, there is some sign of that. And then seeing Pleiades there with Jupiter, and align with your mission, expansion, uh, passion for what you can do as a communicator, in raising the, the frequency that's there too. Are, are there any particular star systems that you were maybe more excited about seeing or uh, had maybe stronger connection, experience with when you looked at your own chart? Yeah, so definitely the, the Pleiades, uh, but also uh, Regulus and Pegasus and Andromeda. So I do have the feeling I'm very, or my multidimensional aspects are very spread out over the universe, over the, the Milky Way galaxy. Um, so I actually feel connected to a lot of uh, different star systems, but uh, Pleiades uh, definitely, and uh, yeah, the angelic aspects of Antares, Regulus. Yes, Perfect. definitely. That makes a lot of sense. That's beautiful. And I love that you mentioned that 
um, kind of multi-galactic connection or like it's really hard to prioritize or put one on the pedestal against the others. I'm so glad that we are kind of repeating it over and over through these uh, podcasts because my hope is that as a humanity, as a collective, we will step into an, a deep uh, understanding, kind of um, experiential understanding that we are all fragments of one and there doesn't need to be labeling and prioritizing and um, praying to uh, something external this way. So it's really good how we are just integrating everything as, as fragments of, of all that is. So Because there are so many like past life, future life, parallel lives. It's like it's unending. So yeah, that's why I, I think so many things are happening at the same time. And it's, uh, it's of course, I believe, um, interesting to look at the different alignments. And of course, some will be more highlighted or radiant indeed than others but maybe in a certain in a different time uh others will um be pointed out more for for, for a person for sure and uh, kind of leads me to ask you about your experience with the course because there is such a huge amount of information there what was your journey like when you realize that you kind of have to find your own way create your own style in how you deliver the information to your clients do you want to talk a little bit about your uh, quantum soul guidance sessions how do you navigate the space of this vastness of information that comes from a chart yeah i think like i'm a person that i also really structured and i'm really good in planning and also taking the time so i really prefer to take like a longer journey and step by step than deep diving into everything at the same time so i really uh, started like from the from the start and then slowly i i went through the through the course uh, material and um i think this also relates to how i do my readings because i really prefer to have a reporting so that i don't miss any details um, and i have all the information there uh, which I maybe not share all if if we have a video call, but then the clients have the whole report with all the information. Um, and I have found this a structure to to highlight the most important. Um, Excellent. Yes, that that's that's always great because I mean the information mentioned inside a course for our practitioners to encourage the client to revisit the recording and the report in a few weeks, months even a year's time and each time something else will sink in because it's really hard to integrate all of it at once even if you have it in a written report so it's really good that you have a lasting um, impression and it's like a gift that keeps on giving when people get their quantum soul guidance sessions booked so your website um your website's name is breathe in life and joy.com it's so <laughs> pleiadian so Andromedan, so high vibe. Uh, I love it. So breathing life and joy with hyphens in between each word.com. You don't only offer quantum soul guidance, but you're also qualified in other modalities. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yes, definitely. And maybe it's also nice to tell a bit more about how I came <laughs> to the to the name Breath in Life. Um, and it was actually during one of my uh, yin, uh, trainings, yin yoga trainings. teacher trainings that I was following and um, there was a moment there I felt so empowered and I was literally like breathing in the air and joy and um, one of my um, yeah other uh, students uh, took a picture of me in that specific moment when I was thinking of okay what should be a nice uh, name uh, that is covering the different things I want to I want to offer like in a holistic way and then it reminded me of that specific moment uh, that I was literally breathing in the, the breath, the air and, and joy. And um, yeah, joy is something that's really important for me and that I really try to embody. So that's how I how I found the, the, the name. Yeah, the different uh, modalities that I'm offering is uh, Reiki, so energy healing. So I will do this in person or uh, distant healing. I also offer uh, yeah one-on-one -on -one, uh, yoga uh, sessions, but it's yeah it's more than just yoga because I'm really passionate about integrating and merging all the different elements in in a session. So for me, it's really important to have like a conversation with someone. What is it that you want to work on? Are there specific uh, blockages? Yeah, so based on that, I will design um, a personalized session um, to to integrate like breath work, to integrate 
uh, meditation, um, yoga poses, and also I really like to bring the music in into sessions. So I play harmonium, <laughs> not that long, but I, I really fell in love with it. It's such a beautiful instrument and the frequencies are so healing. Um, so I sing uh, mantras with the harmonium and that's how I like to integrate. Oh, I want to cry. <laughs> I want to <laughs> cry with joy. I love that instrument so much. I hope you will start sharing a little bit of your uh, music on your Instagram or whatever media you're using. It is such a powerful, such a heavenly gift to earth. I've seen one gentleman um, using really closely to a guy whose hand was broken. He was really in pain and he played for three minutes or maybe five, but the pain completely was gone. You know, it's, it's so, so special. It's so yeah. good to see our generation and younger generation to hold on to these ancient, beautiful uh, instrument. Yay, that's wonderful. So, so beautiful that you're you're not singing like uh, just random <laughs> music. It's like mantras that you're singing. So it's very high frequency, high vibrational. Yeah, music oh, that you So oh. good. So it seems like with these beautiful, powerful modalities, you're really uh, addressing the mind, the body, and the soul as well. So wonderful how life guided you through these milestones one after another. And now you can uh, offer a really beautiful, holistic um, approach when you work with your clients. So they can stay longer, right? They can book multiple <laughs> sessions and really have a transformational experience over time. It also feels a little bit like people that know me from six years ago have no idea what I've been up to the, the last couple of years. Uh, so it feels also like doing this uh, this podcast with you and um, bringing up my, my website since a couple of months, opening up yeah, a very empowering moment to share what I have been relearning and um, yeah, that, that it also feels takes awesome. courage. It takes courage. Really well done. And congratulations. And uh, may, may you be blessed with many new, wonderful connections as new people come to your life to, to experience this. And hopefully also the, the old environment starts paying attention and being encouraged to look at new way of, of looking at things. Because I really hope that we'll have more and more people that we would never have expected uh, will be interested in these things. I feel matrix frequency of certain consciousness is going to start crumbling and people will be opening up more and more to, to these topics because it's for their own uh, well-being, for their own good. Definitely. And everyone and in their own time, <laughs> no pressure. And I think it helps, right, by showing um, um, and by radiating like what you believe in and how you're feeling. And, and I think that, yeah, that really helps with waking up other people. Oh, absolutely. And I would say the biggest inspiration is when they see the radiance of the being, you know, really just pure joy, pure fulfillment with life itself, just high on the on your own supply as um, okay. So and in terms of languages, you offer your quantum cell guidance sessions in English and Dutch, right? Yeah. Spanish? Uh, I hope at one point I can add it to the list, but I don't feel I'm... Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean... That's I wasn't. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand. It, it's not easy to uh, integrate a whole other language with this uh, cosmic vocabulary. All right. Well, is there anything else um, about your journey or about your client session? Who are you hoping perhaps to to work with? What really lights you up? What kind of connections? Anything that you? Anything else you wanted to share? Yeah, I do want to share a, a memory that just popped into my mind, um, and I think this is also part of my my journey from the beginning uh, because uh, uh, during because my first ever yoga class, uh, I was in uh, Sapasana, so this is the 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 time where you <laughs> lay down on the floor after having the done the different poses and what i remember is that every time i closed my eyes i was spinning and spinning and spinning and i saw this big wheel uh, in front of me this visual of this big wheel so related to what i'm doing now and with the galactic astrology um so yeah that, that's something I, I thought was nice to uh, to share Absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually inspired to share a little bit your website, just the intro that you have, because it speaks volumes about what you're sharing here. So hang on. It breathe in life and joy that come. There's this amazing moment where you just feel free and ready to just be in the present moment, breathing in life and joy. 
And then we have the services, elemental yoga, quantum soul guidance, energy healing, a bit about yourself, blog, aliveness <laughs> in your life. And was there anything else important that you wanted to share with the viewers, whether it's the students of the, our course or people who are drawn to booking quantum soul guidance yeah, session? But the importance of really tuning in with yourself and with your, your heart, your higher self, after receiving uh, different uh, information from, from others about your soul journey, because I really believe that in the end, um, you know everything and you know your truth. Um, so that's why I believe it's yeah so, so, so important to really um, validate everything and to tune in uh, with yourself. It's the crucial thing, you know, practicing discernment and really getting to know how your body informs you when something is resonant with your truth and when it isn't. And I just want to kind of take it a little bit further. It's, um, it's a challenge for people who are constantly entertained by external media through electronics. Just There are so many people who are just on autopilot, always feeding uh, their brain with external stimuli. And over time, they totally forget about how their own soul communicates with them through their uh, senses. So I presume people who are navigating towards this type of content and booking their quantum soul guidance sessions are um, not in that category. So by by then you kind of start um, connecting deeper with, with your soul. And uh, so then just simple explanation is that when something is resonant with your soul's journey, with your truth, your whole system, your whole body will feel at peace it'll relax and uh, there is kind of sense of strength in it support groundedness and when something is off then you usually feel it in the gut feeling or you, you'll just know it's like you just know that something is off <laughs> so um, don't be afraid to you know keep what resonates and let go of uh, what doesn't uh, especially when you're seeking guidance through others perception of who you are uh, where you have been and where you're going so thank you Paula for mentioning this important point well Paula thank you so much for coming on our podcast and for dedicating your life to constant expansion and deepening your understanding of of um, human experience so that you can serve others as best as you can and in a really beautiful joyful playful way uh, integrating music and movement and everything else that you have to offer. Congratulations. Well done. Much love to you all. We'll see you again next time. Thank you so much. <laughs>